Coming up, we fill you in on a new AI being piloted right here on campus, discuss the school board's decision on our new superintendent, reveal some details on the senior formal informal event, and let you know what took place with a set of emails that many of you received a few months ago. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Good morning, Oviedo. I'm Savannah Rodriguez. We're two weeks away from spring break, it's the first day of March, and we're bringing in the month like the lions that we are, because we're kicking off the month with Spring Week. Today's theme is USA Day, so I hope you're looking patriotic. If you forgot about today's theme and want to be prepared for the days ahead, we'll remind you about each day's theme later on. But first, let's get to this week's question on social media. Hey Oviedo, I'm William Dean, here with this week's question on both Twitter and Instagram. This week is Spring Week. Share pictures of you and your friends in spirited attire using hashtag TellOHS and you can see your responses on the broadcast at the end of the week. That's it for me, let's get back over to the studio. Recently, Oviedo High became the pilot site in Seminole County for a new AI program. Zero Eyes uses video analytics to detect the presence of weapons on campus. For more on how this new program works and how it can assist law enforcement in a dangerous situation, here's reporter Brianna Babona. As technology advances, the engineers of today have been able to create a system that may never allow another school shooting to happen ever again. Zero Eyes is a company that uses artificial intelligence along with our current camera system to recognize um, weapons. So for example, if someone were to approach the school or take a weapon out of a bag on campus in view of our cameras, Zero Eyes would recognize that and it sends an alert to those of us that are tied into the app as well as district personnel and law enforcement personnel that there is a weapon on campus. It actually sends us a picture of the person holding that weapon and gives us a location of where that person is. That image goes to a third party dispatching center where human eyes will validate the image as to whether it is actually a firearm. Firearms are the second leading cause of death among adolescents and over the past 50 years schools have seen over 1300 shootings and that's in the U.S. alone. With the advancement of Zero Eyes, students are being given that extra layer of protection. Uh, I definitely feel a little bit more safe. It's an interesting concept though, um, but if it works it would be a safety precaution that would help a lot. I, don't know how practical it will be because the cameras don't cover every square inch of the campus, but if it helps detect something early, then I see no problem with it. Not only can Zero Eyes detect weapons instantly, but the AI of the system can detect the movement of the threat as they move across campus from camera to camera. We've looked at artificial intelligence and machine learning for the last three years in weapons detections, and we feel it's the next generation of detecting weapons. We have it on not all the cameras, um, we have it on a good number of cameras throughout the campus and it is being monitored as we speak. Zero Eyes is already in effect. It's already, it's already going. They've tested it several times. Um, each test has been successful. So it is active, it is up and running and, uh, and it, it's fully operational. Not only is Zero Eyes here at Oviedo High School, but the software goes beyond school grounds as some tourist attractions, commercial travel, and live events have the program installed as well with one mission, stop threats at first sight, not at first shot. From Roar TV, I'm Brianna Bubona. Earlier this year, School Board Superintendent Walt Griffin announced he would be retiring at the end of the year. On February 9th, the School Board voted 3-2 to two to appoint Chad Farnsworth to be the next superintendent. The two other votes will cast for SCPS attorney Sarita Beeman. However, last week, in another 3-2 to two vote, the school board rescinded that vote and will take some more time to consider their options. No timeline has been given on when that decision will be made, but it could be at tonight's school board meeting. Alright, if you forgot about today's dress-up theme, don't worry, because you have four more chances. Tomorrow is Totally Dad Move Tuesday. Dress up like a barbecue dad or a soccer mom. Wednesday is Mardi Gras. Thursday is Throwback Thursday 70s. Great chance to sport the tie-dye. And Friday is Orange and Black Spirit Day. 
Each morning, Dr. Daniel will be naming a campus-wide dress-up theme winner at the Clock Tower. Here's a peek at today's winner. Congratulations to TV Productions' own William Dean for being named today's campus-wide dress-up day winner. A couple weeks ago, seniors learned the full calendar of end-of-the-year events and how our school will be handling graduation. But of course, one thing on every senior's mind is what the replacement for prom is going to be. Well, today we've got junior class sponsor Kim Finnegan and senior class sponsor Caitlin Coomer here with us to give us some more details. Ms. Finnegan and Ms. Coomer, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Savannah. This year is very different, obviously. So what kind of considerations did you have to take into account when you were planning what you planned for this year? So even starting with Peyton Park, I had to schedule that be socially distant. So I had to spread everyone out through a whole week. Um, everyone had a different day. I skipped parking spots. I skipped like diagonal. So there is like kids not painting right on top of each other. Um, and then going into senior shirts, we couldn't even sell senior shirts in person. We had to do pre-orders and get all that done. And so everything's just had to look a little bit differently. And now coming into spring and we're still <laughs> dealing with the pandemic. And so we have to make more changes and it's just one thing after another, and we're working so hard together as a team to figure out what can we do to make it the best of the situation that we're in. How to make it the most fun, get you guys the most events that you're allowed to attend. Um, unfortunately, Universal just canceled Grab Bash, but we're still trying to figure out what else we can do for you guys to just make it a really fun senior year, given the circumstances. Yeah, a lot of the planning that we did at the beginning of this year, we were hoping that, for example, prom was going to happen. So when I first met with the juniors, we were talking about theme. We were talking about what we were going to pull from last year, what we we're going to do new. And then things changed. So we're basically planning from the bottom up again. We don't have from the fall forward to plan. So a lot of our planning this year has been scrambling to adjust, but to still make things as memorable as possible since you know this is their their last year and they didn't get a lot of the stuff last year um, because they were juniors and because of everything that was starting so they th this group of seniors has missed a lot so we're trying to make that as memorable and less painful than last year so the formal and informal event that's listed on the calendar what details can you give us about that so um, we're trying to make this senior formal informal event as accessible as possible but still make it something memorable still make it something beautiful still make it something that's special exclusive for these seniors um, so we are doing it outside we will have tents um, it will be april 10th at Oviedo on the park um, we will be setting up photo taking stations which is you know, what the kids always do anyways. They go to Oviedo on the park, they go to Winter Springs, Cranes Roost to get pictures. But the difference this year is it's reserved only for Oviedo seniors. So there won't be you know, other schools vying. They won't be fighting for parking spaces because we will have that entire amphitheater and the park in front of it rented. Um, we're still working on exact times, but there will be a time for photos, a sit down dinner, and then there will be activities after um, that are still in development, but we're trying to do more than just, hey, come on, sit down for a dinner, enjoy your friends, and then leave. Um, so we're trying to do some other things. We'll still do a court. Um, the dress, we tried to leave it open to formal, informal, because again, a lot of the juniors purchased their dresses last year. The guys still might want to dress up, so we want that option open. But at the same time, other people may not want to go purchase a dress. So as long as they're dressy and not, you know, cutoffs, jeans, t-shirts and that sort of thing. We wanted to leave that open so everybody could kind of be in their comfort zone. Um, we're still doing, you know, served meals and all that kind of stuff. We'll have music, just not dancing. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll make it as beautiful and glamorous as possible with what we have. But we have to consider, you know, the majority of the kids and try to keep it under, you know, 50, 60 bucks for a ticket as opposed to 120 to 150 that it would have been if we kept it at the hotel for just a meal. It will be, we will transform the area. It's not going to be open fields and, you know, picnics on the ground. It will look like a special event and it will be just for Oviedo seniors. Great. Well, Ms. Finnegan and Ms. Coomer, thanks so much for your time and we appreciate all you're working to do to put everything together this year. 
On the topic of the senior class, last Thursday, some of our highest achieving seniors were recognized at Honors Graduate Night. This was an event to recognize seniors who have a 4.0 GPA. But the seniors weren't the only ones being recognized. Each student was able to recognize a teacher who had an impact on them during their time at Oviedo. This was the second year Oviedo High has done an honor graduate night, but the first time the school has been able to hold the ceremony. Last week, all of our fall sports teams wrapped up their season, and spring sports is in full swing. Here's a rundown of what's happening in the world of Oviedo athletics in today's O-Town Sports Report. Hey Oviedo, it's Riley Finnegan here with your O-Town update. On Friday, girls varsity lacrosse defeated West Orange 17-4. Senior Abby Green led the team with six goals and three assists. Baseball unfortunately fell to Lake Brantley 5-1 and softball defeated Winter Springs 4-2. That's all for sports, now back to the studio. Finally today, many of you came back from Thanksgiving break a few months ago with an inappropriate message in your school email account. Students all across the district were affected. But what exactly happened and how has the district responded in the last few months? For that, let's go to reporter Lillian Ray. Late November of last year, spam emails were sent across Seminole County through school email addresses. Students of all ages were sent inappropriate emails, attachments, and links. This led to much confusion as far as what was going on and what to do with the emails. I honestly was just more confused than anything. I really didn't know what was going on and I saw the emails to not click anything, so I tried not to. The spam emails kept on going. There were ones where I was like, do you want to meet up somewhere? And everyone just kept replying to them and each one was like, stop replying, but everyone just kept saying that over and over and no one would actually pay attention to actually stop. It would stop like for like a week or so and then start going again. We found that there was a gentleman in the UK who sent a blast out of emails to a lot of different organizations and individuals. We happened to be one of those organizations and our students, unfortunately, received an email with some very inappropriate content. But when some of our students decided to reply all and, and maybe in some cases forward it to other people, that's really where um, some students started to uh, create a little bit more of a problem than what it should have been. As uncontrollable as the situation seemed, eventually the county was able to put a stop to the spams. At this point in time, we have shut down for the most part emails coming from external accounts. Um, the problem is that we can't identify every email account out there that they need to have uh, messages being sent to them. So I would suggest that juniors and seniors at Oviedo High School and around the district um, start transitioning to a personal email. Since November, the emails have stopped, but the confusion and speculation is still lingering among students. There were kids that were talking about it at school. Um, on the announcements, they told everyone to like just delete them, and everyone deleted them, and it was pretty much good then. I just wanted to know like what was going on. I wish they had explained that more. With new systems in place to prevent spams like this from happening again, our Seminole County emails are now back to normal with safe communication between teachers and students. For Roar TV, I'm Lillian Ray, reporting. That's all we have for you today, Lions. Don't forget to dress in the corniest of mom and dad wear tomorrow. Also, for that formal informal event at Oviedo in the Park, we're going to announce the theme on tomorrow's show, so be sure to tune in. I'm Savannah Rodriguez, and today, I'm proud to be an American. Happy USA Day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.